Well, it's always great to welcome into the studios uh, Tony Bateo of Tony's Kansas City. Of course, a uh, must-go-to site for the real news happening in Kansas City that so many don't want to cover. What's up, Tony? Happy Friday, man. Happy Friday. Happy almost Labor Day. I know. It's awesome to be here. It's good to have you here, man. Well, let's start off with uh, this. Everyone's talking about the plaza, what to do with the plaza. Uh, we know it's been a rough few years for the plaza. Is pedestrian-friendly plaza going to win it back over and make it this hot spot again? What do you say, Tony? How do you fix the plaza and all the issues? Uh, well, you know, it, 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 the thing that stood out to me this week is they had the big conversation, they had a big meeting, uh, Mayor Q was there, and it, it seemed like a big deal. They had the drawings, a couple of nice drawings, right? Yes. Um bunch of uh, ur- amateur urban planners, everybody wearing dockers, everybody's dockers pressed, just yes. just so, looking so nice, and nobody invites any merchants or the owners. Mm. And, and and to me, it's just like, like, like it's like, hey, I'm going to, uh, hey, Pete, I'm going to pay over your radio station, um, swing by if you'd like to. <laughs> Like to me, to me, that's the first part of the process. Is like now, it's it's not really serious. It's not really. Uh, and from what I noticed, the follow up coverage that that I kind of followed and shared with my readers was that you know the, the merchants aren't behind it, and you have a lot of people just really common sense, really great takes that were kind of excluded on my blog. People say, okay, you pave over it, you want to reduce crime. How am I going to get back to my car? Like mm-hmm. I'm, I, you 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 put me out in the street like. Four more blocks. Well, here's yeah. I mean, I think I saw something that they would only lose like 150 parking spots mm-hmm. if they uh, made it pedestrian only. Right on Nichols Road, there, right, is mm-hmm. what I saw. They'd still have a few thousand or a couple thousand, whatever it is. I think that's plenty. But you're right; it'd be a longer walk to the car. And I know that you know we like parking right in front of where we're going and just going in like that. But I don't think it's the worst idea. But here's where I don't have sympathy for the merchants. None of them have come together and stood up against what's happened when it comes to crime and the police department in this town. None of them have had a backbone. That's true. So I have a hard time having sympathy when they're not causing the ruckus at City Hall that they should be saying, hey, at least in part, what you guys have done over the last three years with law enforcement in this town and the way you've treated them and the way the media spun all this has hurt us, has hurt our business. And... They're not doing it. So I have a difficult time having a lot of sympathy for them, frankly. That's true. But, you know, these are luxury retail merchants, the most timid people. I mean, these people, um, you know, J-Lo drops one of their bags and the store goes out of business. These are people who are very, 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 like, uh, susceptible to public opinion. And for me, the defining moment, I keep going back to it. I don't want to bore you, Pete. I don't want to bore people who know my stuff. But it, it, it all goes back to leadership. It all goes back to Quentin. And in 2020, when there was a protest and the, and the and they rioted for two weeks, I watched it like a football game. Just, hey, what are the little rioters going to launch at the cops this time? Or who's going to get pepper sprayed? Yeah. And, and it was I watched it for two weekends with my girlfriend. We got takeout and watched everybody beat up each other for a couple weeks. And uh, What takeout did you get? Uh, I had Chinese the first week. And then I think it was, uh, I think Hawaiian Brothers had made its entry. And it's fantastic. Okay. All right. So during that m- melee, during the day, to give him cr- – well, no, he protested at night too. But during this hot mess, Mayor Quinton, front and center, with the protesters, with – you know, it, it, you could, they were mostly peaceful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and, and so you, with this group is, cha- is chanting, no justice, no peace. And to me, when you have an elected official – with the protesters, with the group that's throwing bottles at the cops, that's burning uh, news cars, that's burning police cars. Some got some poor guy ended up getting killed down there. When you have the mayor's like, oh no, 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 I'm on this side. Yeah. When you have a fence to pick, to me that sends a loud, a very loud message to where, when you know, when it comes to doing all those things that you talked about, addressing the city, you know, making a ruckus, trying to put yourself out there, that day that Quentin, that Mayor Quentin Lucas did that, to me, if I'm a merchant, that to- told me where 12th and Oak stands. Mm-hmm. And wow. f- yeah, and for for me, I, I, I watch what I say from that point. You know, I think that if you were to get him in a private conversation, just strip it all down and have a real talk, I think he would regret how he handled that moment. That's yeah. my belief. Um, that being said, I do know people who are there I mean, right there with the mayor on the front lines when all that was going on. And the one thing I will say that I think he deserves credit for that other cities did not do is I was told that 
one of the first nights of those protests, basically law enforcement said, hey, we'll give them the plaza. Because remember, they were holding the line on the plaza, the, mm-hmm. the, the police officers were. And they said to the mayor, hey, if you want us to give up the plaza and basically pull back, we'll give them the plaza. Basically, we'll allow these people to riot through the entire plaza. Right. And the mayor said no. That's what I've been told on very good authority from people who were in that inner circle and in that decision-making room when that took place. He said no. He said do not give up the plaza. But you're right. The optics of being there screaming no justice, no peace, and all that kind of nonsense, it said a lot about you know what's kind of happened in that part of town the last three years or so, and it has not been pretty for the plaza. No, and it's, it's never really come back. And, and to me, I, I see a way out of this, such a, such a huge thing to stand with the protesters during a riot. The way I see out of it for him, for him and, and it does require leadership, it requires risk, is, hey, put there's a bunch of empty storefronts now. Put a, put a substation. Put a can center on the plaza. Like, and that's where a lot of these pedestrian plans and a lot of the plans for the future of the plaza fail is because at the end of the day, after 2020, people still don't feel safe going down there. At least that's, the, that's what I'm hearing from my readers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that, you know, but here's what's going to happen, right? The Kansas City Star will just be like, oh, well, you're a racist if you feel unsafe going to the plaza or something. Like, they're just going to call you names, but they're going to totally miss the bigger point here, which is that people with money who you want in the plaza to spend their money, they've got too many options to feel even a little bit unsafe going somewhere. They've got way too many options these days to do that. Yeah, and I, I think this week speaks to that. When you had uh, the plaza owners uh, defaulting on a $292 million loan, and so, I, I, you know, there's, a, there's enough blame. There's plenty of blame to, to march around for everybody. I think Quentin deserves his fair share. But, I mean, the, the, the truth of it is, is just like you said, there's a lot of options. And, you know, you get most dudes in their 30s with a disposable income. Do, do you go to the plaza? Do you stay at home and on your huge couch, on your 70-inch screen and play video games? I mean, mm-hmm. yeah. so, so you have a lot more people making the decision like, eh, I'm going to order in. I'll... I'll order my girlfriend something nice from amazon prime and play video games <laughs> and if you're you know and if you're a married couple in your 40s and you've got disposable income and you want a night out i mean you know you can go to town center you can go to zona rosa you can go to wherever you got too many options right now right. um all right so the other thing this week i want to touch on when it comes to city hall uh, and you wrote about this yesterday uh the mayor had a big meeting um to respond to missouri's new law that says hey if you're a child uh, you cannot do, and I'm going to use the air quotes, a gender affirming care, um, unless you've already started the process. You got to wait till you're 18, basically, to be an adult to do all this stuff, unless you've already started the process. But what you noted was an interesting quote here uh, from the mayor yesterday that said that basically he knows that being a trans sanctuary city is toothless. There is nothing to it. The quote here from the mayor says, quote, we understand there are many providers who face fear of losing their licenses, face criminal penalties and beyond in connection with legislation that has been passed in Missouri. We cannot be a safe haven in those situations. Well, isn't that admitting that the whole trans sanctuary city thing is worthless? Absolutely it is. And to his credit, he he went to their protest, went to their demonstration, got on mic and told them, like, yeah, we're not going to have doctors losing, losing their licenses here because when they do, they're going to come back and say, hey, I thought this was a sanctuary. Yeah. Give me my $10.9 million so yes. I can you know, play golf for the rest of my life. <laughs> play golf even more for yeah. the rest of my life. So, um, so no, I, 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 you know, I have to give him credit with that. But if you really drill down and look at what he said, and the, the, the trans sanctuary idea, it, it's, it's like a lot of things that people have criticized him for. It, it sounded great when he said it, but when you drill down to the, uh, to the nuts and bolts of it, it's just there is no there there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what it seems. And that's, um, you know, I guess they heard what they needed to hear, but it's like, why even bother with the ordinance then if everyone knew it was going to be a bunch of smoke and mirrors anyway? Yeah, I, I and and I, you know, God, God love the LGBT commission. They, they, you know, it, it's good that they have something like that, and and uh, and everybody's voices need to be heard. And you know, your your average, like I said, it's the guy playing video games. These people are out trying to mess with policy, and and you know, good for them. But I mean, if you look at the dangers coming from the trans community, it, you know, it's not doctors and it's not you know it, it is it really the toilet when i look at the trans community and the problems they confront 
it's very like, you know, some of them live really difficult lives. And you have, it goes back to our main problem is, is violence, is public safety. You have trans people over the past few years, Kansas City has a very high rate of trans people getting killed on the street. And I mean, that's the main issue. And it's not, there's no narrative there. They're killed but in urban areas by other people of color. Mm-hmm. And usually people who are, are not the most enlightened or, or maybe try to dabble in it. I, I mean, let's let's be honest. It's a lot of mistaken identity and prostitution mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. stuff like that. But, but, you know, that to me, when you add up the horrible instances of trans people getting killed, it's not because they got rejected for a restroom at Target. It's because they live in very tough circumstances in places in the real world that aren't very accepting. And, and that's in our own urban core. Yeah, that's a good point. Tony's Kansas City. Good to have him on KCMO. Tony Bateo is uh, joining us in studio. We're going to take a quick break, uh, come back, and dive into more of the top issues here in Kansas City with him, the Royals' future, what that might look like, and uh, other things of note as we hit 9.15 on KCMO. We continue with uh, Tony Bateo of Tony's Kansas City. Always good to get him in our studios here at KCMO Talk Radio. So I, I got to ask you, before we get some royal stuff and, and whatnot, um, obviously Ralph Yarl's case is back in the news. Uh, Andrew Lester, 84 years old, was deemed able to stand trial. That's what we learned here this week uh, by a Clay County judge at Tuesday's preliminary hearing. So Thursday, actually. What uh, what do you make of this case and where it goes from here? I think what's unfortunate, and, and I, I kind of want to throw the question back to you and, and ask you how you're going to deal with it. Because what I read, I read a horrible column from the start. Just awful. And what I get... <laughs> a little redundant, but I get your point there. Anyway, <laughs> continue. I, yeah, just, just your standard fare from the star. What I get from how a lot of people are going to approach this is they just want to... I, I mean, they're just... Oh, God, how do I say this nice? Well, the well. They're just going to the well of, oh, how much racial animosity can I get out of this? How much can I stir this up? And I was like, okay, this is my thinking, and I think this is what I'm getting back from my readers, is, okay, thank God, kid lived. Guy is 80-something years old. First offense, does he represent a danger to somebody? So, I mean, in most of those instances, unfortunately, we live in a world where people get shot all the time. And... You know, the, the end game, in all likelihood, I, I, I of course he deserves a trial. Everybody deserves to make their case. But we're talking about maybe probation. So just from a very real, realistic standpoint, guy's going to get probation. You so, think? Yeah. yeah. So so what do we, so what, what is the public, where does this discussion go to in the public interest? And that's really my question is, yeah, we can stir up like, oh, today, today the idiot column from the star was, oh, you know, the, the police treated him too tenderly because God forbid you. And, and even the cops are saying this guy was scared out of his mind. He had just shot somebody, police lights going off, glass shattered everywhere. Yeah, he's 86 years old from the cops perspective. This dude might croak right on the scene. Yeah. And so I can understand why they may, may have had, why nobody gets slammed against the, the cop car window. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that was the point of the column, which should have been a Facebook post, which actually should have been a throwaway tweet. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I, I, from the public interest in someone who like, likes to think of readers, likes to try to think of my community first, it is do we, re- as media people, as people with audiences, what do we get by just going to the well and just and just pressing it as hard as we can and just trying to get every last drop of like, oh, man, this is racist. What do we get out of that? I I mean, it it can't be clicks. Please, Pete, tell me it can't be clicks. (sighs) I I don't know what else it could be. I mean, I I don't know what else it could be outside of appeasing the uber-woke Northeast Johnson County part of the community that has no idea what the story is even really about anyway. I mean, I, I don't know what else to make of it. I... I, uh, you know, they even write in this article about, you know, the grandpa was uh, radicalized by conservative media. I mean, all these, you know, because the grandson said it all those months ago. It's like uh, they're going to hammer this race thing as much as they can. But, you know, and this is where I get bothered by the story beyond obviously what happened here, which is some a young kid getting shot in the head, which is terrible. But the attorney, I'm reading this in the star, Lee Merritt. He said um, the teenager was shot because he was armed with nothing other than his black skin. So they want to make this racial. And then you have hack outlets like the star that are going to carry that water on behalf of the attorney. 
And, um, you know, it's nothing but division as far as I can tell. And let's bring in Fox News and talk radio and race and all these other things when, as far as we can tell right now, until proven otherwise, you got an old guy who's got somebody at his door and clearly does something he should not have done. But to suggest it was driven by race and conservative media is just fitting a narrative that they desperately want to fit. Right. And, 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 and at a certain point, it, it comes up to the public to push back against that. And I don't know if that is just leaving angry comments or if, if, if that's continuing. I mean, you, you want to tell people to like, oh, don't subscribe. But who's left? Who's left? Who's left? Who subscribes? Yeah. And, and, and so I, I, I think with this is, is I, basically I just come in from a point of media literacy. You have people who are very, very de- dedicated to pushing a narrative and you don't have to buy it. Yeah, you don't. So, uh, Tony, take me through where you think the Royals are at right now. Would you give the edge to North KC? Do you think downtown's in the lead? Uh, how would you handicap this thing? I, I After this week, and I had a story, Stigall mentioned it. One of my readers told me Stigall mentioned it as well. The Heartlander picked it up. Um, the recent survey last week came to light. Oh, Clay County doesn't want to pay for that taxes. Now, it's bloggy stuff. It's it's rhetoric. It's it's part of the game here. But the survey the survey came out of Jersey. And and we also know who else is from Jersey in, in, in at City Hall. The implication That's the city manager. That's right. For the those impl- that don't know. The, the implication is that hey, these coincidences keep adding up. But what that says to me is that when you start play, when you start engaging in that when you start playing those type of games that means you're taking this thing seriously mm-hmm. and 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 to me it's it's the wrong way to go and I mean I, we talked about this before and what we'd like to see as Kansas City taxpayers is you know poor poor mayor Kay Barnes and Catherine Shields when she was at Jackson County you know you uh, you put on your lipstick you get a, gl- a bottle of champagne and a butcher knife and you show up at their door at 12 o'clock. This is all metaphorically. Yeah. You show up at their door at 12 o'clock and say, you know, this could go one of two ways. <laughs> and so, you know, those are the kind of offers to extend themselves. You'd like to see the city more and the county more engaged in luring the team. From my perspective, I want them to stay in Kansas City. But we have this kind of like really like uh, uh, it, it, this week, Jim Rowland came out and said, hey, we're all waiting on the Royals. You know, this is county government. This is a this this is a billion dollar deal. Kansas City doesn't need to wait to anybody. Like I say, you put your lipstick on and you go and make your pitch. Mm-hmm. And and I don't see our leaders humbling themselves in order to do that because one is term limited out, Mayor Quinton and Frank White, I hear is not gonna run again. These are not guys in a position to, you know, make that late night walk in the rain. No, not at all. And you got, you know, Apparently a recall effort beginning this weekend at Santa Caligon Days out there in Independence. So we'll see how that goes for Frank White. Um, what have we not talked about? we got a couple of minutes here. What, what, what has piqued your interest this week, uh, Tony Bateo, that we have not touched on yet? Well, I mean, it kind of goes back to two things. It kind of goes back to the, our, our development conundrum and uh, the West Side Ferris wheel. I don't know if you're just just chomping at the bit to go on the Ferris wheel because you've never been on a Ferris wheel before. No. But, but that is... Uh, that's that. That's the big eye roll in my neck of the woods. You know, uh, we'd like infrastructure. We'd like, uh, you know, maybe some public transit to the airport. Uh, we get a Ferris wheel. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so that's that's the 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 life that we're kind of coping with. And 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 I guess this goes back to my last point or my last thing that I was I was talking with you about is you know we're going into Labor Day or. Two things. Sorry, I'll make it quick. This Casey Pet Project. Nobody wants to adopt pets anymore. Yep. We spent seven million to build a pet shelter, not too already overpacked, already overcrowded. So at some point, I think the big. If I don't talk to you again this year, Pete, the big overarching theme as we move forward is like, how do we invest our money in things that are sustainable? We're building entertainment districts now to link entertainment districts. Mm-hmm. Uh, and 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 trying to lure the Royals and maybe the lo- the Royals whatever whatever they build maybe eating into the P and L district and at some point I mean what pays for itself There's not enough money to go around It's just not yeah. Tony Bateo Tony's Kansas City uh, Great stuff as always man Thanks for being here in studio Thank you Pete You bet.